In this video, we're going to learn the basics of writing user-defined functions in C++. So functions are an important way of splitting up a program to make it easier to read and understand, as well as to reduce the amount of duplicated code. If we had a program that was 10,000 lines long, and all that code was just a series of statements in the main function, it would be really hard to read and understand what's going on. Functions also allow us to reduce the amount of duplicated code we have in a program. Instead of writing code to solve a problem again and again, we can define how to solve the problem once in a function. Let's say that our program finds the travel time of different trips given distances and speeds. We could have here double trip time one is equal to, and we'll have 200, let's say kilometers, divided by 40, let's say kilometers per hour. We could then output this trip time with C out trip one, and we'll have maybe hours, and then we'll have trip time one, followed by an inline. We'll do the same thing for two other trips. So we'll copy this, and we'll have, let's say trip time two, with maybe some different numbers. So we'll have like 100 kilometers and 20 kilometers per hour. We'll call this trip time two, and we'll have trip two here. We'll do it one more time. We'll have double trip time three. We'll have trip three, and we'll have trip time three here. And this is going to be, let's say, 150 kilometers at 55 kilometers per hour. Now this is a pretty simple and small example, but we are repeating the logic to calculate the trip travel time three times. The more that we repeat logic like this, the more likely we are to make a mistake. A function would allow us to define the logic to compute a trip travel time once, and then we could just reuse that function. So functions in C++ are a bit like functions in mathematics. So in math, we'll have functions like fx, where fx is defined as x plus one. And that means f2 is going to be equal to two plus one is equal to three. Functions in C++ can work in a similar way in the sense that they can take in some values, do some work and produce some resulting value. We'll define a function to calculate the trip travel time given a distance and speed. We'll have here double travel time. So travel time is the name of the function and double is the type of value the function is going to produce. We say the function is going to return a value of this type. Next, we'll have what are called the function parameters. These are the variables that are going to store the values the function accepts as what we call arguments. So we'll have here double distance and double speed. So distance and speed are kind of like x we'll use them to define the work the function is going to do. We'll have here distance divided by speed, and that's going to calculate the travel time. We're going to return this value. Here we'll have return distance divided by speed. So this is the value the function is going to produce. We can then call this function. When we call the function, we're going to supply it with specific values for distance and speed. So we'll have here travel time and we'll supply the function with 200 as the distance and 40 as the speed. So this here is what's called a function call. It's how we actually run the code in the function and 200 and 40 are what are called arguments. They're the specific values that distance and speed are going to be set to. The function is going to run and return distance divided by speed for those values. This function call is essentially going to be replaced by the value returned by the function at runtime. And we'll assign that to trip time one. We could then call the function again down here. We'll have travel time. And this time we'll supply it with 120 as arguments. Then we'll have travel time and this time we'll supply it with 150 and 55 
as arguments. We'll save this and compile the program and we'll give it a try. We'll execute it and we'll get here. Trip one is five hours, trip two is five hours, and trip three is 2.72 hours. So functions allow us to split our program up into smaller pieces, which can make our program much easier to think about because right now travel time is sort of like a small mini program where the program accepts some input and produces some output. If we design and write our entire program as a series of relatively smaller functions, it's almost always going to be much easier for us to write the program that way because then we're solving a series of small problems instead of one giant problem. Now, it only takes one line of code to calculate the trip travel time, but imagine we're solving a problem where it takes 20 lines of code or 100 lines of code to solve the problem. In that case, if we're not using a function, we would have to repeat that many lines of code wherever the problem comes up. That's going to make our program much larger. Repeating the logic like that is what's called code duplication or a code clone. It's a very bad thing to do in computer programming. We don't want to have repeated code when we can avoid it. Code duplication is a major source of bugs. It also makes our programs much harder to maintain because if we need to change something about the duplicated logic, we need to change it in all the places where that logic is duplicated. And we may have even lost track of all the places where the logic was duplicated. Now, if we look at this function, we call this here the function body. We call this here the function prototype. And this here is what's called a return statement. If we try to put this function below main, it's not going to work. So I'll cut this and then down here, we'll put this below main. We'll save this and try to recompile the program. And we get this error here, undeclared identifier travel time. So the reason why we're getting this error is we try to call travel time here, but the C++ compiler is going to read our program from top to bottom. And because travel time is no longer defined above main, the compiler doesn't know what travel time is. But it's actually a popular style to define our functions below main to keep the main function at the top of the file. What we can do is provide a function declaration above main. The function declaration is the function prototype, basically. It's this here, the return value, the function name, and the function parameter types. We'll copy this and up here, we'll paste the function declaration it's called. Now, if we save the program and try to compile it, it's going to work and we can run it and that's going to work too. The function declaration is essentially telling the C++ compiler to expect us to define later on a function called travel time which is going to return a double value and accept two double values as arguments. In the meantime, that's enough information for the C++ compiler to know the function exists and to make sure we're calling the function correctly. Then later on, we'll supply a definition of the function. Now, the advantage of doing this is that it keeps the main function definition closer to the top of the file instead of potentially burying it underneath a bunch of other function definitions. We don't actually need to keep the parameter names when supplying the function declarations. So for example, here, we could delete distance and speed. These aren't actually necessary. If we save the program and compile it, it's still going to compile okay. We can create a function which doesn't return a value by using the return type void so here we could have void and then print error message. We can also have functions which don't accept any arguments. So here we could have open bracket, close bracket, and this function is not going to accept any arguments. We'll provide a definition for this function down here. So we'll have here C out error cannot divide by zero, followed by 
and end line. Then we'll call the function up here. So we'll have print error message, open bracket, close bracket with no arguments. We'll save this and compile our program and run it. And we'll get here, error cannot divide by zero. Now we can call one function from another function. So for example, we could call the print error message function from the travel time function. Down here, we could have if the speed is equal to zero, then we'll call print error message. Otherwise, we'll return distance divided by speed. Now, in the case that the speed is zero, we're not actually returning any value. That's going to cause a compiler warning. We'll save this and try to compile the program. And we'll get here a warning. It says non-void function does not return a value in all control paths. So in other words, if the execution of the function goes down this path, the function is not going to return a value. And the compiler is warning us about that because the function is not a void function. We could just return a special value like negative one in this case. Now up here, we'll comment out this. And for this trip time three here, we'll pass in a speed of zero. Then if we save our program and compile it and run it, we'll get error cannot divide by zero and a travel time of negative one. Now we can pass variables to functions as arguments. So for example, here we could have double D for distance is equal to 150 and double S for speed will set to 55. Then here we could pass D and S to travel time. So here we could have D and S. Now when we do this, what actually gets passed to the function is the value the variables are set to. So 150 is going to be passed as the first argument to the function and 55 is going to be passed as the second argument to the function. We call this passing by value. If we save this and compile the program and run it, we'll get here a trip three travel time of 2.72 again. So when we pass a variable to a function like this, what's actually being passed is the value of the variable. It's not like the travel time function has access to the variable D in main. It's just given the value of D. This has important implications. Let's go over an example. Up here, we'll declare a function to increment a number. The function will have a void return type. We'll call the function add one, and the function is going to accept an int as an argument. So we'll have here int, and then we'll have number for the parameter name. Then down here, we'll provide a definition of the function. So we'll copy this and we'll have add one. And what we'll do is add one to number. We'll have number is equal to number plus one to add one to number. Then we'll declare a variable called number in main. We'll have int number is equal to 10. We'll call add one and we'll pass it number. Then afterwards, we'll output number. We'll have C out and number colon, followed by number, followed by an end line. Now if we save our program and compile it and run it, we'll get here number 10. But this might be confusing. We might expect number to be 11 because here we declared a variable called number and we assign 10 to it. Then we call the add one function and we pass it number. Then here, the function has a variable called number and we add one to it. And then here, we output number after calling the function. So we might think that number should be 11, but this variable here number lives inside of main. We say the variable has the scope of main. When we call add one and we pass it number, what actually gets passed is the value 10. This variable number here has the scope of add one. It really only exists inside the add one function 
for the time that add one is called. So it's going to be set to 10. We add one to that number variable, but then when the function is done executing, this variable no longer exists. And number in main has been 10 all along. So here, when we output number, we get 10. There is a technique called pass by reference, which allows us to pass a variable to a function such that the function can actually modify the variable. I'll post a link to a video covering pass by reference in the description. So this has been an introduction to user-defined functions in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.